I would now like to welcome to the lectern the man credited with writing the speech. He may have different opinions. We'll find out about it. The writing of the speech now. Would you please welcome Graham Freudenberg. Uh, friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, the It's Time uh, campaign committee met early in uh, October 1972 and the Federal Secretary, the great, beloved and ever missed Mick Young, yes. Mick announced the venue and the date for the policy speech. It would be here at Blacktown and it would be on the 13th of November 1972. Now everyone agreed of course, Mick was running the show and I said, so it's the 13th. I'm glad to see that nobody here is superstitious. <laughs> That's not to say that some of us didn't uh, have our little rituals and our superstitions. Goff, for instance. Over the years, he had developed a habit of touching me on the shoulder for luck, just when he was about to deliver any big speech we had worked on together. So just before he made the grand entrance into this hall, I stayed in the mayor's room to watch the live television and perhaps have a beer or a cigarette or two. Um, he duly touched me on the shoulder and said, it's been a long road, comrade, but I think we're there. <laughs> and, and so we were. But that long road wasn't just the six years Goff had been leader of the party, or the 12 years since he had been, had become deputy leader. The longest road of all was those 23 years, as Bob said, those 23 years in opposition since Menzies had defeated Chifley in 1949. Truly, for much of them at any rate, uh, the years in the wilderness. In fact, no one in this room that night, under the age of 47, had voted to see the return of a federal Labor government. Nine successive defeats since 1946. I can't emphasize how much those 23 years influenced the content of this speech and it must be said, the conduct of the Whitlam government. As Gough said towards the close of the speech, we are coming into government after 23 years of opposition. The program is ambitious. It has to be so, it should be so, because the backlog is so great and we can't expect uh, to, to clear away that backlog in three months or even three years. Little did he think then, or little did any of us think then, that we would be returning to Blacktown for another policy speech and another election in just 18 months. Or that despite winning a second election in May 1974, that three years would be all that would be, all that we would have. But the overwhelming thing about that night was the absolute certainty and conviction that those 23 years were over and that a new era was beginning, as Bob put it so well. And it's no wonder that in seeking the proper opening for the speech, we reach back beyond those 23 years to the greatest of them all. 
And although the first uh, five words are now indelibly associated with golf and the Blacktown policy speech, golf has always acknowledged that it was John Curtin. In his broadcast to the nation on the night of Pearl Harbor and in his policy speech in the Melbourne Town Hall for the 1943 election. It was John Curtin who began with the unforgettable words, men and women of Australia. And after we'd decided on those, that salutation, that opening, really the rest of it was easy. It, it, did, it did fall to me uh, to put the material together. And I suppose I added a touch or two. And I, I uh, drew on the, um, the great authors that I've uh, uh, plagiarised for the best part, best part of uh, 50 years. There's uh, a touch of Lincoln there, uh, with malice towards none. Uh, there's a, um, a few uh, references, uh, verbal references to uh, Churchill. And of course, and we saw part of it tonight, the, the, um, the appeal to the French Revolution, the, to give a new meaning to equality, liberty, equality, fraternity, to the horror of the Sydney Morning Herald, <laughs> which next day editorialised, what a dreadful thing for a, a, a leader in modern Australia to evoke the spirit of the French Revolution. Look what that led to. <laughs> the, the, the same paper, the same great uh, newspaper, uh, also referred to what you saw tonight here in this room as reminiscent of a Nuremberg rally. <laughs> but effect, as I say, I did uh, have the task of putting the material together, but effectively and essentially, Goff had been writing this speech for five years or longer. And in the weeks before uh, the 13th of November, if the colleagues were brave enough to inquire what might be in the policy speech, Goff would simply reply, well, comrade, read the platform, <laughs> which was easy enough for him to say, seeing that he had rewritten most of it himself <laughs> at the conferences of 1967 and 69 and 1971. But it, it is a reminder that this speech was truly a collective effort and it truly belonged to the whole Labour Party. And here I might mention, speaking of the collective effort, I must mention uh, Race Matthews, whose input in the making and development of, of the policy in those uh, opposition years was uh, just so immense, but often um, um, uh, not uh, given the... Uh, the um, uh, credit that it so richly, uh, he so richly deserves. Um, the, the fact that the policy speech reflected so much of the platform as revised at this conference is also a reminder uh, of how very seriously we all took the policy speech in those days. The policy speech has been one of the great Australian political institutions. It has no equal in the other democracies. As the campaign opener, it was as Australian as they're off in the Melbourne Cup. And I cannot but think it a great loss to, the, to Australian politics 
and indeed to Australian governance that the policy speech has been delayed and uh, downgraded in the age of Twitter and the 24 seven uh, news cycle. Do you know that Bob Hawke and I did not speak to each other about what we'd say tonight? But uh, it's amazing how, uh, and not for the first time, uh, we're on the same wavelength. Um, so the It's Time speech that you saw part, bits of tonight was consciously set in, in terms of a very long tradition. It wasn't unique but it was very special. I don't suppose there's any other speech of which it could be said, as Kim Beasley Senior said, the platform is the Old Testament, uh, the policy speech is the New Testament. <laughs> and this speech, this policy speech, endures not only because it set out the program for what would be the Whitlam government, but because it set for the first time the agenda, a national agenda, on a range of issues on health, education, urban Australia, multicultural Australia, the environment, Aboriginal land rights, a more independent uh, foreign policy. And I was struck uh, tonight uh, to remember the emphasis Gough uh, placed upon the region. This was new language for the, for the times. And so much of this speech was in fact new language in, in, Aust in the Australian political uh, discourse. And uh, I, even I was impressed how well it stands up today. Um, and then the over uh, overarching theme of the speech, national responsibility and national solutions for national problems. Not that the people at Blacktown that night heard much of the, the speech, nor did the people watching it live on TV. Um, uh, I'm not sure what that, uh, if that was, that was all broadcast. The ABC gave us half an hour. But the printed document of the speech uh, runs to some 40 two pages in double column, about 20,000 words, all typed up flawlessly in seven drafts by Carol Summerhays, who's here tonight. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, Goff's reading copy, which you have in front of you, um, uh, it was cut down to the size you see, and I think uh, Carol and uh, Barbara Stewart uh, uh, typed that up uh, on the, in the last uh, few hours on the, the 13th, and Barbara is here tonight. Um, and, um, but I don't think Goff got through uh, much more than two thirds of the, the reading copy. Um, uh, such was the, the uh, enthusiasm and the, the applause. They seemed, in that edited version, they seemed to have cut out the applause, but it was um, uh, uh, tumultuous. Um, um, and it was a marvellous start to a great campaign and great fun. And at one stage, uh, Mick Young had to warn us, go easy on the Billy McMahon jokes. You're, ma <laughs> you're making people feel sorry for the poor little bloke. <laughs> but the momentum built up to the last triumphant crescendo at the St Kilda Town Hall two nights before uh, polling day. And there were two main speakers, Goff, and the president of the ACTU. And I, at least, am on record as saying that there were two future Labor Prime Ministers on the stage of St Kilda Town Hall that night. <laughs> and, 
Goff made it in a couple of days. Bob had to wait a bit longer, but it was worth it. And that's really the imp important thing about tonight, because what we're really celebrating is not just what happened here in this room, in this hall, 40 years ago. We're also celebrating what happened in the 40 years after. Unquestionably, the most important and successful years for the Labor Party and for Australia in our history. In the 71 years of federation before 1972, we had been in power federally for a total of 17 years. That's 17 out of 71, winning five federal elections. In the 40 years since 1972, we have won nine federal elections for a total of 21 years out of the 40. And I'm glad to say, and proud to say, we're still there. And 20, those 21 years were years that transformed Australia. And that transformation began here on that night of 13th of November 1972, 40 years ago. And in moments of uh, discouragement or despondency, and we have them, I always say, try and recall what it was like in those 23 years before 1972 then look at what has happened in the last 40 years since 1972. When talking about policy, Goff's favourite word is relevance. Make it relevant. And when I think of those 40 years, tumultuous years, with all their victories and their defeats, their achievements and their setbacks, all the mistakes and self-inflicted words. I still believe Goff's last words in this speech, and you heard them tonight, in this hall, are as relevant as they were at the glorious moment they were first uttered 40 years ago. And those words were, I do not for a moment believe that we should set limits on what we can achieve together for our country our people, our future.